Reef Dudes is sponsored by Ecotech Marine and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're talking RODI units and when to actually change each of your filters. What's going on guys? Devin for Reef Dudes. Now I constantly get asked questions. When should I change my sediment filter? When should I change my membrane? When do I change my carbon? When do I change my DI? And so we're going to dig into that. Now I have went into this in the past, but it's been a while, so I figured we'd do a little bit of a refresher. Um, most RODI units work in a similar fashion. Um, generally they go left to right, sometimes they'll go right to left. But essentially your source water comes in and it flows through your sediment filter. And this removes all the particulates, so whether you have like a 5 micron or a 1 micron, it's going to filter all those out before it goes through the rest of your system. Now before, after the sediment, it comes out and it goes into a carbon filter. Now same thing, it could have different pore sizes, but the carbon is going to remove a lot of the nasties from the water. And you pre-treat it with carbon before it goes through your membrane and that's really gonna extend the life of your membrane. Now, once it comes out of the carbon, it goes into the membrane, and you can see right at the edge here, this is where it enters the membrane, and it will flow through it, and if you look at the back side of the membrane, you have two ports here. Now, the port that's most in the middle is your product water, that's your good water, and the one on the outside is your waste water, and that's the kind of one that goes down the drain or to be used somewhere else. And then your product water from there flows through your DI resin, which kind of polishes it and removes anything that's left over. Now on my unit, I do have two membranes. I did this so it would refill my reservoir faster. So basically after the carbon, it splits off and it goes to each one of the membranes and then they tee together for the product water afterwards to flow back into the DI resin. Um, so again, you can do that if you want to produce more water faster. <laughs> Um, now, first and foremost, if you have a clear housing, it makes it much easier because you can look in and see how nasty that filter looks. A brand new one's going to look nice and white. This one's getting nice and brown. That being said, it doesn't need to be replaced yet. And how I know that is because I have a pressure gauge on here. And right now, I'm sitting at about 70 PSI. Um, so generally, most RODI units, they recommend at least 60 PSI. If you're below that, you might want to consider getting a booster pump. Um, but basically the no when, way to know when you change the sediment filter is when you see your pressure drop. So either your product water will be coming out very slow, or if you look at, if you have a pressure gauge, you know, you know it's normally at 60 and all of a sudden it's like 40, you, you know there's a huge pressure drop, which is because you're clogged up your pre-filter. Now it's also possible you've plugged up your carbon filter. It could be a similar thing. I've had it where I've changed this one, still had crappy pressure, and then I changed my carbon filter, and then I was back in business again. Um, but in general, I have fairly good water here. So I generally will change the carbon filter every second sediment filter. And that's what's been working for me. And if you have really bad water, I mean, you just change both at the same time. If you want to prolong it a bit, you can, and you have decent water, you can probably change every second one. But again, that of course is going to depend on your city's water supply. Um, next up is the membrane. So how do you know when to rechange your membrane? So every membrane will have a rating. Usually they're 95, 96, 97% efficient. So what that means, if your source water coming into here is 100 and your output product water is a TDS of three, that means it's operating at 97% efficiency. Now, if it's rated for 95% and you and you have five or less TDS, that's, that's in spec. That's within its 95% efficiency rating. If you start seeing it creep up to six or seven, then you know stuff sneaking past it. It's exceeded its life more or less. So when you start to see your product water TDS creeping up beyond whatever it's rated for, that's when you know it's time to replace this membrane. Um, now, so say we got 100 TDS, say it's 96% efficient. So that means we should have four or less TDS coming out of this. That water will flow into the DI and the DI is going to polish it and bring it to zero. So if you have a TDS meter on here, you can check it. And once it goes anything above zero, it's time to place your DI. Now, if you do really want to monitor your water, I do like these dual TDS meters. Um, on my other unit, I actually have two of them. So I have one for the product, wa the source water, the product water, and then I have two DIs. So I have after DI one and DI two. So you can kind of see each stage of it. Um, at the very least, it is good to have one for your product and your output water. Um, another funky one I put on here, it's turned off. I had to unplug it to get it here, but the TDS meter plus this guy goes over Wi-Fi and it'll send me an alert when my DI is exhausted and it goes up. So that's kind of a cool way to do it. Um, but I have this one automated, so it runs every three or four days to refill my ATO for the tank and for my vivarium. So I don't really look at it and it runs a lot. So it's nice to have those little alerts when it's time to change the DI resin. But yeah, overall, really easy to know when to maintain these. I mean, they look complicated, there's lots of hoses, but it is pretty darn simple goes into your sediment, out to your carbon, 
into your membrane. Then one, one of your membranes will go to your wastewater, the other is your good product water. The good product water flows into your DI, and then output of DI is what goes to your aquarium or your top off or your mixing station, wherever you're putting that filtered pristine water. So hopefully this clarified some stuff for you guys. Um, they are pretty simple units, as complicated as they look, it is a fairly simple thing. And yeah, make sure you keep up on your filters, keep your water pure, and keep your tanks happy. Alright guys, if you learned something, as always, hit that like button. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. I'll catch you guys on the next update.